Day 14. Time, approximately 12.35 a.m. Location, Emerald Shores, Big 52, South Branch. Against the din of waves crashing into the rocky shore, Poppy Smiles faced a gravestone. Her group of friends argued a short distance away, but she could only hear the voice whispering inside of her head. It spoke of pacts and promised dreams. Yes. Yeah. Just... make all of it stop. Henrietta barely heard Puppy talking behind her, but she felt a sudden chill in the air, like a cold night's breeze, bringing with it the creepy sensation that she had just woken up from a bad dream, but couldn't remember what it was about. Suddenly, what the foal had said seemed a lot more important. Every pony turned towards Puppy Smiles. Was she talking with herself? Make what stop? How? As Henry approached, she could see Puppy's eyes were closed and her head was hung low. The foal's mane was rapidly changing color, turning a dark blue from its original blonde. Puppy? Are you okay? What? I... I think you have something in your mane. When Puppy spoke, it was with a different voice, like the sound made by a chorus of ponies calling from the bottom of a cave. I salute you, my humble minions. I'm finally here among you. Bow at the era of a new dawn. Henry cocked her head and raised an eyebrow. The what of a new what? Puppy, what's going on? Sidekick's eyes turned from red to blue, and it took up position on Puppy's flanks, standing like a sentry. The creepy new Puppy continued, I'm not Puppy Smiles. I'm Creepy Voice, a child of the stars, and your new ruler. Under my guidance, Equestria will rise anew. Skold shook his head and looked over at Molten Gold. The stars, like in ancient zebra folklore, those stars? The scribe's question was interrupted by Henrietta's laughter. <laughs> Creepy voice? What kind of name for a villain is that? I mean, really? Creepy voice? Did you come up with that all by yourself? Puppy stepped back. With an embarrassed expression, uh, rapidly shifted to anger. It, it is a name that you'll learn to respect, fools. Now bow down before me, and return to your towns. Announce my advent. Trigger Happy snorted, stepping in front of the other ponies. Or else? The blue flames that burned in Creepy's eyes expanded until they completely filled her helmet. A blazing cobalt crown appeared above her head, and more flames spouted from her back, forming a pair of ghostly wings. Or else, I'll devour your souls. Happy hesitated, looking at the filly while Lonesome Pony muttered to scold. Can she do that? Can she eat souls? The scribe looked back at the DJ and shrugged. How am I supposed to know? If she really is connected with the zebra dark magic, then it's possible. Only, I don't think she's strong enough for that just yet. The Pegasus raised an eyebrow. She isn't? No, she's manifesting. Just look at how the fire of hers flickers. I think I know how to stop this story before it begins. The scribe spoke in a very low voice, while Happy kept the creature occupied. Molten Gold and Lonesome Pony listened to him with all their attention. I think that I can sever the bond that ties this entity to Puppy's soul. Without a soul to feed on, creepy voice, uh, <laughs> that creature won't be able to manifest itself and will be banished. So, are you waiting for an imitation? asked the Goal impatiently. No. I am not strong enough to do this on my own. It is a ritual, but it is long and complicated. It's meant for unicorns only. No offense, Gold. The old treasure hunter shrugged. No offense taken. 
So, basically you're telling us that we're gonna be fucked by a zebra demon with a foolish name? Hey, what's going on? Does the egghead here have a plan? Why popped his head into the trio of ponies interrupting their conversation. Actually, yes. But I need some minutes to figure out the details. Help Happy keep creepy. Boy, no. Really? What kind of name is that? Describe face hoofed. Well, keep her talking while we try to pull this off, okay? Why nodded and turned on his tail, trotting towards the trio composed of Henrietta, Trigger Happy, and Jammed Gun. Hey, your highness. Did you mention something about a new era? Could you elaborate on that part? Will it be better than the manure that we're swimming in at the moment? The nightmare stopped considering Henry and her annoying question about names and turned towards the new arrival. Indeed. My magic is far superior to that of normal ponies. With it, I can heal this poisoned land and bring about a new reign of prosperity. Your violent lifestyles will be at an end. I won't allow my subjects to squabble amongst themselves. Instead, you will build immense temples in my honor. All you have to do is worship me, and pay tribute to me, and all the problems of your lives will be solved. White nodded at the response and tilted his head. Well, that sounds mighty interesting. But may I ask what you mean by paying tribute to you? The creature smiled before sitting down and closing her eyes, acquiring an air of mentorship. Absolutely. Your master, that is me, will ask very little for the good of the many. Aside for your worship, I would require the sacrifice every full moon from each major city in return. I will cleanse the poisoned land of pony kind, allowing you to grow your food and live your lives under my rule. Trigger Happy cocked her head, frowning. W what are you going to do with the sacrifices? Creepy voice waved her hoof dismissively. Never you mind. Henry and Happy had their mouths open, listening at what the possessed filly was saying. Happy drew her weapon, but she stopped when she noticed White's gesture to wait. Henry, on the other hand, scratched her head. Yeah, but... Will you give us back, puppy? The nightmare blinked, her eyes for a moment, surprised. What? She doesn't want to come back. She is sleeping and dreaming, in a place where no pony can hurt her. We made a pact. At that, Trigger Hippy Happy snapped. You did a what? Listen, I know my friend Puppy smiles and how easy she is to trick. Whatever pact you made is not valid. You can't just... Just talk a fool into something and pretend it's legitimate. Now, let her go. The monster laughed with a silvery, tickling voice. <laughs> You're funny. Why should I yield a perfect soul to possess? Her obsession trapped her in this plane, and as long as she sleeps, she'll never realize the truth. So no, I'm not letting the fool out of her dream. But another hoof. I'm offering you all the privilege of being my heralds, so you can announce my coming to all of Equestria. So, long story short, Henry tilted her head. Your nightmare moon? Well, no. I mean, yes. I mean, nightmare moon was more ancient and powerful than me. For a moment, the creature hesitated. She seemed to recover almost immediately. But I am more than strong enough to shut your stupid beak. Henrietta deadpanned. So, basically, you're a newbie? A nightmare noob? Trigger Happy burst into laughter, rolling on the grass as she fought for breath. Mr. White face-hoofed while the other three ponies stopped talking for a moment trying to understand what was going on. Enough! That's it! There's plenty of subjects I can use. I don't need you. Useless bunch of... bunch of... ignorant weaklings! Henrietta snickered. Said the filly that can't count beyond four. 
You insolent little... You'll suffer. No, she won't. Bad monster. Stay put. Scold stepped in front of Henrietta, staring straight into Nightmare Moon's eyes. We will banish you forever. With the power of science. <laughs> the creature giggled, evidently quite capable of shifting from anger to mirth on a whim, and dismissed the scribe with a wave of the hoof. Don't make me laugh, science. Do you even have the slightest idea of what power you are facing? Oh, for Nightmare Moon's sake. Try something more believable. Scold smiled, not very impressed by the Nightmare's reaction. Oh, so you want the details. Very well. And listen carefully. Since I already had the opportunity to check on Puppy's suit, I did some research and I found some interesting clues. Your very existence in this place is caused by foolish attempt at necromancy as a life-saving device. But I know how to fix that horrific mistake the Ministry's made. The talisman itself has proved to be very impervious, but the spell inside is more than unstable. The way your flames wax and wane make that abundantly clear. Now, I have some unicorns here, and even if they don't know a thing about dispelling magic, I can tap into their power for as long as we need. So, guess who's getting a dispelling today? What the? The demon stepped back, with an expression of real concern on her muzzle now. All right, every pony, I'm casting the spell. You just clear your minds, and this nightmare will be over. Let the magic flow. A flash of light exploded from Scold's horn, and shot between the assembled unicorns, each of them sending out ethereal threads that became woven into a mighty spell. Happy closed her eyes and let the magic flow through her, quickly followed by Mr. White and Jammy. Soon all their horns were glowing a brilliant white, and the light expanded until it had enveloped the whole hill and every pony on it. Henrietta grit her beak tightly, and was forced to shield her eyes from the blinding glare. Something that Scold had said didn't sit right with her. He was going to stop the demon by destroying the necromatic spell that was used as a life-saving device. But wasn't that what was keeping Puppy alive? Henrietta turned towards the old scribe. Wait, are you trying to kill Puppy? Skull didn't reply, but from within the shining cloud of light, the monster's voice confirmed Henry's fear. Fools! If you break the spell, the fool will die with me! No. Fuck no. You're not going to kill her, you fucking unicorn! Roared Henry, charging at Skold, slamming into him so hard he flew for a couple of meters before landing heavily on his back. He screamed in pain and lost focus of the spell. The light exploded in a rainbow of colors, spreading all around and dancing in every direction, but without a pattern. It was more like a giant disco ball gone crazy and rolling along a corridor than a real rainbow. And when at the last the light died, Nightmare Noob, a.k.a. Creepy Voice, opened an eye, uncertain of what was going to happen next. Everything seemed to be still and silent, so she dared to open the other eye too and looked at the confused ponies in front of her. An evil smile appeared on her now very satisfied muzzle. So, in the end, Puppy's griffin friend proved to be very useful to me. But next time you might want to pick your allies yourself, yes? The monster chuckled. No, oh, silly me. There won't be a next time, since you're all going to die. Skold shook his head and got to his hooves, Still dazed at Henry and his tackle. What? Why did you stop the ritual, you feather brain? It was working! The other unicorns looked around at each other in a stupor, struggling to stand after the exhaustion of casting. Molten Gold tried to wake Mr. White, while Henry advanced on Scold with a grim, accusing stare. You! You won't take Puppy from me! There must be another way, I'm sure of it! But, you stupid, deluded brat, the foal is already dead. We're trying to save the Big 52 here. Come down from your, your wonderful dreaming place and get real. Scold was practically foaming at the mouth, 
The mercenary had disrupted their best chance to win, and now a lot of ponies were going to die because of her. The nightmare savored the taste of crushing victory that was still lingering in the air. Oh, this is so tempting. Looking at your little argument as a real threat. But I have a schedule. Creepy voice looked at Sidekick, and in the moment, the ghoul's eyes turned a light blue. The canterlot foal turned towards the ponies like a hound. Nightmare Noob smiled. Let the games begin. Go, my minion. Teach that chicken some manners. Sidekick crouched, ready to pounce on Henry like a cat on a mouse. The griffin was so focused on her argument with Scold that she didn't even notice the ghoul jumping until it was too late. She didn't even hear Trigger's warning. The impact sent the griffin and the ghoul rolling down the hill. A whirling ball of hooves and claws. Henry fought without thinking. Her predator instincts being all that kept her from being crushed by the foal's unholy strength. She tore with her talons and punched with her fists, dodging and returning strikes and knowing that a single hit would be the end for her. The melee continued, both figures locked in a dance to the death, even as they tumbled over the edge and fell to the rocks below. Creepy Voice watched as her minion vanished from sight and shrugged. Oh well, meanie chicken broke my toy. It seems like I'll have to do everything myself, as usual. So, who's first? Lonesome Pony and Molten Gold exchanged a quick glance before opening fire. They emptied their magazines at point-blank range, the bullets tearing through the nightmare like a hot knife through butter. Dozens of holes dotted Puppy's chest, but they didn't seem to have any effect at all. Many had already begun to close. It's hard to kill something that's already dead, isn't it? Creepy's voice giggled as she lifted Lonesome Pony with her magic and slammed him to a tree. The Pegasus hit the trunk with a wet, crunching noise and fell to the ground, unmoving, his back bent in an unnatural way. Not even checking to see if Lonesome was actually dead, the Nightmare turned towards Jammed Gun. So, I reckon you're with this sweet mare there? How cute. You'll die together. Like the protagonists of some cheap old play. Any last words? Actually, yes. Mr. White smiled a little as he interrupted Creepy Voice and levitated a radio from his saddlebags. Plan B. His eyes narrowed. We have backup. With a sound like distant thunder, sniper fire blew apart Puppy's helmet and ripped away one of her legs. The wicked creature roared. Spreading her wings, she flew into the sky and conjured lightning from clouds. The bolt struck the ferris wheel like a hammer, beating the metal and weakening the last joints that still allowed it to stand. The gigantic metal structure creaked and screeched before collapsing on the small building that Sagebrush and a couple of acolytes were sniping from. No! Sage! White turned towards the town looking at the rubble that had once been his nephew's hiding spot. No, this was... this wasn't going as planned at all. A salvo of missiles had streaked through the air towards the creature, and she was far enough from the ponies below, shrouding her completely within a flourish of explosions. The rangers charged from their hiding spots in town, discharging every weapon they had at the monster's direction. The battle had begun. Henry groaned. It was all dark, cold and wet. Her bones ached in places she didn't even know she had. And she was almost sure that something was completely wrong. A sweet and merry voice hammered like a pink flash in her head. No, don't worry. It's just you being your usual meanie self, nothing new. Ugh. Meanie what? Am I dead? The griffin's headache was getting worse, while the sound of explosions and ponies screamed, thundering in her ears. There was a... a... thingy? Something like a pink dot dancing in her head and speaking to her? Silly chicken, you're not dead, duh. You're just a bit confused, and somersaulting down six meters into those rocks didn't help at all. But I'm sure you'll be okay, lickety-split. Dashy did that all the time and never got hurt. Puppy. How is she? 
Hey, I need to save her. The pink dot moved a bit, shifting from the colloquial merry attitude to a more accusing one. Really? Because it seems to me like you're simply trying to hawk her off for yourself. What the... What the fuck are you blabbering about? I just want her to be safe. So she can stay with you forever and ever? The voice started to fade. Whom are you wishing well? Poor little puppy? Or poor lonely Henry? I... I don't know anymore. But I... I want to make her happy. She seems so different. Like a distant memory that doesn't want to fade. I don't want to lose her, but she seems to be unable to think of anything else but her mother. Like a... a reoccurring nightmare. Or maybe a sweet dream that doesn't know how to fade. Maybe she just needs a last little help from her very best friend. The voice had gradually changed. At first it sounded like an overenthusiastic and young, but now it sounded like an old mare. Somehow it was very, very familiar to Henry, reminding her of the dream she had when she was prisoner in Sun City. And there's just one last step to trot. Find Puppy's Rock and fulfill its destiny. With a gasp, Henry opened her eyes, finding herself in the middle of a rocky beach. She was lying on what was left of a badly crushed space ensign sidekick. The ghoul had taken the brunt of the fall and was now just a flat, squashed yellow bug. Henry drew one of her forty-fives and made sure the creature was simply gone, putting another two holes in its head before checking the surroundings. Up above her head, a pony flew over the ridge, screaming as she went out into the sea. The dark magic faded and she kept going for a good two hundred meters before splashing into the cold waters. Henry tried to ignore the sounds of battle coming from above her and gulped down a healing potion as she began her search for that stupid stone. Puppy stone. Puppy stone. How the hell am I supposed to find a damn stone in the middle of a rocky beach? Magic stone my ass. She scowled at a nearby rock and kicked it hard, sending it flying into a metal box a few meters away. The rock rebounded and, of course, hit Henry squarely between her eyes. Fuck! The griffin rubbed her forehead and picked up the offending stone from the ground. Every rock had its voice, and Henry knew this one well. That's the last time you get one over on me. So, what now? You hit a metal box, dumb rock. Are you trying to tell me something? What are you? Some sort of rock of destiny? Henry snickered as she approached the box and introduced its padlock to the Rock of Destiny. At least, clank, you're being, clank, useful, crack. Very well, let's see what's inside the treasure chest. Some papers, an old brushable Applejack doll, some photos. Henry took the pictures and looked at them. In one, there was Puppy Smiles, only younger and without her rad suit. She was smiling in front of a carrot cake with four candles on it. There were some ponies in the background. It seemed to be a birthday party. On the second picture, there was a white stallion with a purple mane. They were sitting in front of an old wooden sign announcing that they were entering the town of Appaloosa. Between the two ponies sat a pouting Puppy Smiles, as if she didn't want to take the photo or be in it in the first place. The filly seemed even younger in this picture, maybe three. Henry turned the picture around and found a note. Last trip with better. A third photo showed Puppy dressed up in a smock and sporting a blue bow in her mane. She was smiling, proud of her new dress. Another note written on the front this time said, Puppy's first day of kindergarten. Turning the last photo, the young mercenary found some weathered lines written on the back. In a different place and a different time beyond the horizon, we'll be together again with Dad, and I'm sure I'll be proud of you, because Mom will always be proud of her little sunshine. I love you, Mom. A missile flew over the ridge and exploded on the shore, illuminating just for a moment the tears ran down Henry's face. The mercenary sighed, finally giving to the truth in front of her eyes. She... She never belonged here. Fuck. Henrietta rubbed her eyes, putting down the photos. Fuck. Why does it have to end this way? 
Why? A new explosion painted the sky red. Ponies up there were dying, fighting something that was already dead. Dying because she wanted to keep the fool for herself instead of letting her go, as it should have been. Now Henry knew what had to be done. Still, she didn't like it. Not fair. Not fair at all. Paladin Goss's eyes widened as the missile he just fired was thrown back at him. Goss! No! Cold Shower could only watch in horror as the explosion took away one of her oldest friends. She turned towards the nightmare, her eyes full of anger and pain. Stupid bitch! Why won't you die? The barrels of both miniguns mounted on her power armor spun up, and she fired until her guns were empty. Bulla bullets bounced harmlessly off the Nightmare's shield and were completely ignored as the creature launched a second acolyte into the ocean. Creepy's voice had already killed two ranger and thrown several other attackers into the sea, but with all these ponies around, she was getting confused. How was she supposed to fight all of them at once? Really, these stupid equians didn't even know the rules of a proper duel. She was growing bored of their little game. Yes, killing ponies could be fun, but it did seem quite pointless especially when she had more important things to do, like take over the world. Who was supposed to be the leader of this bunch of idiots? Oh right, that old scribe. Creepy voice smiled, and with her evil on her mind. So, where's that guy with the cape? Landing in front of the old pony, Creepy voice folded her thorough wings and faded, uh, faced her adversary, not even trying to hide her amusement. There you are. Scold, right? There was a pause while the unicorn looked confused at the foal's change of mood, but the nightmare cut it short. Very well, die. With her magic, the monster grabbed the old stallion's heart and squeezed. Scold collapsed with barely a whimper. In the same moment, Henrietta flew over the ridge, landing again on the tomb's hill. The scene in front of her eyes made her cringe. It was all her fault. All of this was happening because of her selfishness. Puppy fighting, ponies dying. This wasn't what Puppy would have wanted at all. It was time to end it. Puppy! Puppy, listen! The nightmare let out an annoyed side and turned towards the griffin. Hey, it's not your turn yet. Don't you know there's a list? I'm almost finished with this one. Then I'll be killing you too. So don't push and keep your ticket ready. Trigger Happy crawled towards Scold, while Nightmare was busy giggling at her own humor. The security mayor tried desperately to revive the scribe. Their numbers were beginning to be mowed down like a wheat field in front of a reaper. Molten Gold was struggling to break free from the tree he had been impaled on. Lonesome Pony had already passed out with his back broken, and even the well-equipped and combat-trained rangers were losing ground. This was the end. They were all going to die here. For a moment, Trigger felt sad. She really, really wanted a foal of her own to love and care for. This was just so unfair. Puppy! Wake up! You! You can see your mother for real! Henrietta kept screaming at her with a high-pitched bird voice. She was actually quite annoying. This nightmare's a bug! And a stinker! You're cooler than that! You learn from the best! Creepy Pup snorted. Aren't you even able to wait your turn to die? A halo of dark magic surrounded a large chunk of road and hurled it towards Henry, but the griffin was agile and dodged easily. Now I'm disappointed, bad chicken. Don't make me come down there. Henrietta flew in front of Puppy Smiles and pressed her beak against Puppy's glass helmet. Puppy, you moron. You're dead. D-E-A-D. Just like your mom. Are you so stupid that you don't even realize how to die? Dump this idiot and go with your parents, please. What? The nightmare blinked her eyes, startling by the griffin's sudden assault. What was she saying? Was she trying to speak with puppy? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Shut up. She can't hear you, fool. Come on, puppy. Wake up. You're not forced to stay here. I... I don't want you to stay here with me. You have to go. I'll be fine, just... 
Henrietta was trapped in a blue corona, and her body started to twist, producing disturbing snapping sounds. A creepy voice looked straight into the mercenary's eyes, with a stare full of anger and hate. You. Die. Now. Henrietta smiled weakly, unable to resist the powerful magic crushing her body. Happy. Your mom is just over the horizon. Puppy Smiles sat in front of a pond, looking at the fishes that swam within. Everything around her was still and calm. A blanket of snow covered the ground, and the clear sky showed hundreds of stars. She wasn't happy, but somehow she wasn't sad either. It was like being dazed. Everything seemed so muffled and unimportant here. There were just her, the snow, and the fishes in the pond. Puppy wasn't aware of how much time had passed since she sat there, but it wasn't so important. She just wanted to forget. She couldn't remember. Well, maybe it was actually working. At least until a weird goldfish poked its head out of the water. Puppy, you moron, you're dead. What? The filly tilted her head, then checked her hooves and tail. I'm not dead, stupid fish. A second fish poked its head out of the pond. This one spoke in a feminine voice. Come on, puppy. Wake up. You're not forced to stay here. Henry? Why are you a fish now? Puppy giggled. Silly Henry, fishes don't talk. Frost began to creep over the pond, but a third goldfish jumped out of the water, talking again with Henry's voice. Mom is just over the horizon. Mom, where did Dad go? He's somewhere beyond the rainbow, puppy. Will, will he come back? Mom didn't reply. The puppy really, really wanted to see Dad again. Can... Can we go to where he is? Yes, puppy. One day. Maybe not tomorrow. Or the day after. In a different place. In a different time. We'll all be together. Okay? Just... Just over the horizon. Pinky swear? Cross my heart and hope to fly. Stick a cupcake in my eye. Puppy looked up in the sky, and finally saw him. Really, really late. And I know I actually don't have all the time in the universe, but I hate these kinds of anomalies, and this one has been going for 200 years. I am beginning to lose my cool. There are a lot of better places to be than here. A skeleton wearing a black hood was talking in Puppy's direction, but he seemed to talk more to himself than the foal. A little filly smiled. That skelly pony was funny. He was talking like those grumpy ponies at the veteran retirement house. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? Ah, please, not that litany again. I'm going to resign, or strike, or strike and then resign. The skeleton pony was interrupted by the giggling filly. <laughs> skelly pony's funny. Stopping his monologue, the grim reaper finally noticed the foal was looking at him. You can see me. Is this some sort of prank? Because if this is a prank, then I'm going to give up for real this time. Puppy tilted her head. A prank? I hope not. Last time I made a prank, I was spanked ultra hard. The pony paused for a long moment, before falling down on his haunches with a ghostly sigh. At last. Puppy trot near the weird-looking stallion and sniffed his clothes. Ah, uh, who are you, pretty skelly pony? Me? I'm the Grim Reaper. Death. The inevitable end. The Black Stallion. From the fool's blank stare, the skeleton realized that he was just wasting good words. But my colleagues call me Mort. Long story short, I'm the guy that shows the deceased how to reach the afterlife. Bobby tilted her head, confused. So, have you seen my mom or not? The skeleton shook his head. You're a lost cause. A silvery ticket, covered in shining pink letters, appeared in front of Mort, 
and gently fell like an autumn leaf between Puppy's hooves. Here, take this ticket. It's worth a ride to the other side. <coughs> Remember, not every pony gets the silver ticket. It's a really special one that will bring you there, lickety split. Very grateful. Puppy's eyes grew bigger. I... I'm going to see Mom. For real? No more pink arrows or stupid bully bots or crawling houses. Just... Mom? The Reaper nodded. Exactly. Mort paused for a moment before continuing. It must have been hard. This is my personal way of saying I'm sorry for not being able to help you earlier. Puppy stopped listening as soon as the pretty skelly pony had said what she wanted to hear. Yeah! The foal hugged the skeleton for a moment, before looking at the pond, which had now completely frozen over. All right, Henry. Just let me say bye to my friends. Puppy turned on herself, and the whole scene with the pond and the snow exploded into a thousand shards, dissipating into nothingness and revealing the battlefield around the graveyard. Just over the horizon. The griffin's eyes grew clouded as she slipped into unconsciousness. As soon as Henry had said those last words, the nightmare's eyes flared pink, and for a moment her expression completely changed. Bye-bye, Henry! A pretty skelly pony is sending me to where mom is, and this time with a super shiny ticket. The pink in puppy's eyes faded away one last time, and all the lights in her HUD turned red, signaling an endless sequence of system errors. Warning. Subject 001, puppy smiles cannot be located. Warning. Power level is critically low. Warning. Self-repair system not functioning. Warning. Hardware not found. Warning, general shutdown in five, four, three. Thank you for using Ministry of Peace technology. Have a nice day, and please, be safe. With those words, the whole HUD on the helmet disappeared, leaving only the shocked face of Creepy Pup staring at the now empty glass. The monster stepped back in horror, releasing her magical grasp on the griffin, who fell to the ground and rolled a few meters downhill. What have you done? Fool! I'll kill all of you immediately, puny insects! The monster stretched her wings, ready to release a new wave of magic. But something was wrong with her. The suit had begun to deflate like an old leathery ball. What? What's going on? I'm melting? No! No! Small eruptions of pink gas leaked out from a hole in the fabric while the monster fought to keep her grasp over what was now an empty husk. You... you have not won. I'll be back. Ponies make the same mistakes all the time. I'll be back. Nightmare Pup's face melted into a pink eruption, filling the helmet with a curtain of gas. For a moment, the suit inflated like a party balloon, as whatever force that kept the pink ooze in a fluid form stopped working and the pink agent reverted back to its gaseous state. As the scream from the nightmare reached its highest note, the suit's locks failed, and the gas exploded out of the harness, making a sound like a whistle. The ponies that were still capable of walking grabbed the wounded and dragged them away, far from the expanding cloud of pink death that had started to lazily invade the whole hill. Go! 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 Get away from that stuff! Cold shower dragged away what was left of Goss, followed by the others. Creepy voice continued to scream as they fled, a long wail of anger and agony. Half dragged and half pushed, for a moment Henry regained a spark of lucidity. Everything seemed distant, and she felt as if she was floating on a warm place, lulled by gentle waves. In a minute, in the middle of that moment of peace, the mercenary heard Puppy's voice. Hey! Hey, Henry! The griffin groaned. That fool wouldn't know the difference between a wrong moment and the worst possible moment, even if she bumped into it with her muzzle. Puppy ignored Henry's mental complaints. Listen, I have really no time, but I really, really, really wanted to say that I'm sorry, but I have to go. I... we are still friends, right? Still friends? 
That was a weird question. The filly was more than a friend. She was something more, something bigger, in Henry's life. Really? You? You like me that much? I know. We can be like sisters. Yeah. Henrietta Days. I love, love, love it. The Griffin chuckled, still half dazed by the nightmare's embrace. Henrietta Days. Sure, that was totally going to happen. Adopted by a pony. Okay, sis. Gotta go. I love you. Bye. And with those last words, Puppy's voice faded, and the griffin passed out again. Day 14. Time, approximately 5 p.m. Location, Emerald Shores, Big 52 South Branch. Good day, Big 52, and for once, I mean it. This is DJ Good Stuff. And you're listening to Radio 52, the radio of good news. Bolsterous, triumphant music played for a few seconds. I've been receiving transmissions from Ironworks and Broccoli since this morning, and now I can safely say that the news is confirmed. The Wild Herd is defeated. Woohoo! Yes, my little ponies, you heard me well. The good guys trotted down to Ironworks and kicked some red ass for good. The DJ laughed enthusiastically, evidently too happy to keep the shade of professionalism. I still lack the details, but it seems that the Applejack's ranger is along with a group of volunteers, and please note that Lonesome is among them, assaulted their camp very early in the morning and caught them by surprise, killing a large number of raiders and routing the others. This is how things go around here, raiders. You better think twice before you mess with us. Good stuff paused a moment before continuing. In the background, there was the sound of shuffling papers. Okie dokie. Now, for those who have friends and relatives in Ironworks, the situation seems dire. Most of the adult ponies have been killed during the siege, but there are still some survivors, mostly the elders and the foals, with a small group of guards that found shelter inside Ironworks' stable. I don't have a list of survivors so far, but I'm working to get one. So expect more news during the day. In other news, Splendid Valley was hit by a huge explosion that completely devastated it. Apparently, this has to do with the Enclave, since... Trigger Happy turned off the radio and turned towards the hill. The pink cloud had been scattered by the wind, but not before coloring the solitary tree in a sugary pink. Right under the tree stood two graves. Henrietta looked at the last stone in her claws, the Rock of Destiny. The Griffin sighed weighing Puppy's weapon before putting it on top of the small mound erected next to Rainy Day's grave. A small toy pony sitting on a full-sized red scooter had been left in front of the memorial, almost like a bunch of flowers. The young mercenary opened her beak, looking for some words to say, but closing it again, without thinking of anything. Mr. White arrived from town, carrying a rusted road sign, the stallion had patted Henry on the shoulders before taking a brush and painting two words on the metal plate. Puppy smiled, daze. Trigger Happy approached the new grave, frowning a bit. Is... is that all? Just a name? It seems so... cold. The White Apple's leader shrugged. It's how we've always done things around here. Graves are not for showing. The stallion looked away from Trigger, staring at the other graves on the hill. Cold shower and scold sat still in front of the numerous ranger graves. Sagebrush's tomb was sitting alone, facing north, towards Salt Cube City. White shook his head and turned back towards Happy. It wouldn't be fair. Her grave is not the only one that was dug today. Let's stick to our traditions. Trigger Happy nodded and sighed before she turned away and approached Scold. The old unicorn was looking at the hollow tag in his hooves, but when the mare approached him, he put the object away with a sad expression. The security mare kept her voice low as possible when talking to him. How are the DJ and the ghoul doing? Scold shrugged. 
Gold will survive. He just needs some radiation. Lonesome Pony will, well, we'll try implanting him with an artificial spine, but we lack the correct instruments. I don't know if he'll survive the operation. Your cold friend should be with him right now. Maybe you should go and check for yourself? The Mayor lowered her eyes. I'm sorry for your losses. I could have taken all the guards from Tunnel Town with me, not just me and Jammy. The old scribe smiled weakly. It's not your fault. We had no idea what we were going to face here. Those that gave their lives fighting against that horror will be remembered as heroes. I know it won't bring them back, but maybe this will at least give some meaning to their deaths. As soon as Trigger Happy departed, Scold trot next to Cold Shower and sat with her in front of Goss's tombstone. The mare was crying in silence. The two ponies were more than comrades, and the loss had been a bad blow for the paladin. He was a good friend. And, you know, even if he acted like an ass. Shower was having a really hard time, trying to hold back her sobs as she spoke. The scribe nodded, wrapping a hoof around the mare's neck. Yes, he really cared about ponies. He knew what was important. His stare wandered across the graves. Four. Two paladins, two acolytes. The rangers probably owed Puppy more than that. But it felt hard to accept it. Still, he didn't want to blame the griffin for that. It simply didn't feel right. We lost many ponies today. Acolyte sugar flavor. And Scribe Scroll was still so young. I'll have to inform their parents. Cold shower sighed. Tears were now running down her muzzle. Scold, please, tell me it was worth it. I lost so many friends. I lost the pony that I loved. Tell me, tell me they didn't waste their lives. We are just ponies, shower. We do what we can to make this land a better place, day by day. The records say that in the last generation, in the Big 52 settlements, cutie marks involved traditional works like masonry, farming, and arts are slightly growing. Maybe things are getting better, and maybe our foals will see a greener equestria. The old scribe looked at Puppy's grave. And maybe, one day, there'll be again a place where foals like Puppy will be free to play and make friends. Who knows? Henrietta rubbed her eyes as she left Puppy's grave and trot towards the beach, looking at the waves. The young mercenary checked that no pony was looking at her, and when she was sure she was alone, she took Silky Tail out from a bag hugging the doll and hiding her face in the pink plushie. Don't worry, sis. Tomorrow will be a better day. Footnote. Level up. Twenty. <clears throat> no. Wait. You're dead. Sorry, kid. Better luck next time. New quest perk unlocked. Philly luck. Requirements. Level eight. Minimum amount of luck. Seven. All right, we were just surrounded, okay? And the droids are all over the place, okay? And we've got, like, five shots left, okay? Then, all of a sudden, we hear a ruckus from downstairs. And the next thing we know is that half the robots were brutally demolished piece by piece by Celestia knows who. With a stone! Real story, man. Honest. Occasionally, when facing robots or feral ghouls, you could find some group of them already dead, brutally killed with a stone. Go, puppy.